Welcome back at Yagayima TV. Uh, today we're going to talk about personalized medicine. As you know, uh, when you take a tablet, then the tablet's being produced uh, in a large scale, on large scale, and uh, is not, let's say, personalized to your personal situation. And today I'm going to talk with uh, Beatrice Pereira. She did a uh, PhD research project at the University of Central Lancashire in the UK. Uh, about 3D printing of modular polypills for personalized therapy. So welcome, Beatrice, and uh, thank you. Uh, let's start with uh, with what you have been doing on your research project, and then go from there. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, first, I would like first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me for this interview. Uh, so I'm going to talk about 3D printing of modular polypills for personalized medicine. So just a quick uh, overview of my background. Um, as Peter said, I worked in a, I did my PhD in the University of Central Lancashire, which is in Preston, in UK. Uh, and I was part of a research team led by Dr. Mohamed Alnan, who is a pioneer in this field. So initially I was a Erasmus student when I first came to the UK and I worked also in the same uni with 3D printing of medicines in general. And then during my PhD, I focused more in polypills, which are tablets or capsules with multiple drugs. So just a quick overview, um, introduction. Um, so the current healthcare is based uh, on a one size fits all approach. And now, and this is associated with uh, variations in health outcomes, and this is due to the individual uh, variations. Uh, so with the introduction of uh, genetic uh, diagnosis, um, this approach has been replaced by a patient-centered approach. So it is believed that in the future, um, the healthcare system will have a database with uh, information about the patients, uh, for example, in terms of their genetics, other conditions they may have, their weight, uh, age, and then this will um, simulate uh, the target pharmacokinetic profile of the drugs, and then they will generate um, an individualized uh, therapy for this patient. And then this uh, will be, um, we will have an e-prescription and healthcare professionals will be able to 3D print these medicines on demand. So one of the um, applications of 3D printing more specifically is in the production of polypills, like I said. Um, and the advantages of this is that, um, for example, with traditional tableting, uh, we need to produce in large scale. And there have been many studies uh, studying the, um, comparing the polypills with usual care, which is the administration of several drugs at the same time. And actually, they have shown that there's improved patient adherence. And this is a problem with when people need to take several medicines. They, sometimes they don't take it for one day or two, and this is associated with disease progression, for example, uh, and increased hospitalizations. So one of the issues with the traditional tableting methods is the, the rigid nature. So for example, if we have one tablet with three or four drugs that are specific, and they have a specific dose. Not everyone can take these specific tablets. Uh, and with the traditional meth manufacturing methods, it's hard to change just one of the drugs. For example, the dose of one of the drugs or the number of drugs. So 3D printing offers much more flexibility in terms of the number of drugs we can add, uh, the dose of each drug, and we can individualize also the release profile, all also improving patients' uh, adherence. So, one of the projects I worked with during my PhD was in the production of multiple compartment capsules. The reason why I chose capsules was because the technique I used was fused deposition modeling, 3D printing, and this is associated, uh, so for this you need heat uh, to 3D print. And this is, can be associated with the drug degradation if you uh, melt uh, filaments that contain drug and this can um, degrade some drugs. So when using capsules, uh, this capsule will have a shell that will be blank. So this will be just polymer. And then the drugs are manually uh, dispensed in these compartments. So in this case, uh, my goal was to develop two different systems. And these systems will differ in the design. So here you can see they have different design. Here is parallel, here is concentric. And they will also differ in terms of the polymer that we use. So on the left, we use PLA which is not soluble in water. So the goal here is that the shell will remain intact, 
and then the drugs will be solved through these free pass corridors and through these pores here. So to show that this is a modular system, I tried different, for example, pore sizes to see how this was going to affect the release profile. So I'm going to show you these results later. Then here on the right, I used PVA, which is water soluble. So the goal here is that the shell will uh, dissolve with time. And then I, um, I changed the thickness of this wall here, the internal wall. Uh, so by changing the thickness, increasing the thickness, I will delay the release profile, the release of these two drugs that are here in the internal compartments. So here is the, I can, um, a quick uh, summary of how I produce these. So as I said, I just use 3D printing to produce the shells. So initially I 3D print the bottom shells, then I fill this paste with the drugs. So this was something also that we optimized this kind of paste. So we made this hot paste that is easy to dispense with the syringe. And then at the room temperature, it will solidify and it will produce a stable structure and there's no leakage. Then after this, I, we just print the top shell and seal the capsule. So just really quickly, I will show you more or less how it worked. So here, as I said, I changed the size of these pores. So this is the size uh, of the pores here. So you see, you can see that by increasing the size of the pore, the release profile is faster. Mm -hmm. um, then with this, this system, we, as I said, we increase the wall thickness and this delayed the decrease, uh, sorry, this delayed the release profile of the drugs. So we achieved what we wanted to achieve. So we can change the release profile of drugs. So even these drugs, not all have the same release profile. We can individualize them uh, just by a digital approach. So it's something, is, it can be used for a complex therapy, but we use um, few starting materials and we use a easy approach, easy way to do this. So it's easy for the healthcare professionals to do it in the future. And here in this case, I used four specific drugs, but the number of drugs that can be used here is unlimited. Um, so I would just like to um, highlight some of the challenge and future work that needs to be done here just to apply this in a clinical setting. So we need to ensure the quality and safety of the drug product. This is by controlling the formulation we are going to use. We need to make sure that the components are compatible between themselves and then also between the formulation and then the equipment with, the, for example, with the 3D printers. We also need to control the process. We need to make sure that these 3D printers are GMP qualified, also in terms of validation of the control, the, sorry, validation of the cleaning process to make sure there's no contamination, cross-contamination. Then there's also the need of more preclinical and clinical studies. Clinical studies, especially in populations that may benefit the most of this, which are which are pediatric and geriatric populations and see how really they can, uh, how we can improve their therapy. And then there's also the need of uh, better regulatory guidance. And so for this is needed that academia, industry and regulatory bodies um, collaborate with each other to give us a more specific uh, regulatory guidance in terms of 3D printed uh, drug products. Um, so, this is it, really. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your uh, for your uh, in, in very short time to explain your approach. I, I have one question because if you have multiple drugs in one pill, is there no let's say uh, 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 how do you say interaction between those drugs possible, or when people are so uh, have uh, swallowed it that something mm -hmm. happens? It can be. So this is, for example, another advantage of capsules that we use different compartments. So we physically separate them. Mm -hmm. So there's no physical interaction between them. And then, for example, if the interaction between the drugs is, for example, after they are um, taken, for example, in terms of pharmacokinetics, of, of, for example, and the absor absorption of these drugs, we can change the release profile of these two drugs. So we can choose one to release immediately and one to release later to avoid any interaction. Okay, okay, okay. Well, well. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, concise explanation about 3D pharma printing and your your research project. Um, 
as you know, I always ask at the end of a, a presentation a personal question and um, uh, about your favorite music or art or food or city. So please go ahead. What's your favorite thing? Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about food. Uh, I'm Portuguese and I was recently in Portugal, so I had the chance to eat some of my favorite foods. Uh, I'm going to talk about a specific dish. I will even share a picture yeah. uh, of this, this dish so you can have um, <laughs> a better idea how it looks like. <laughs> you make, you make, you make, you make, watch you're uh, hungry then in that case. <laughs> yeah. So this dish is called francesinha and the literal translation is little Frenchy. This is because the person that invented this dish uh, was Portuguese and used to live in France. And when he came back to Portugal, he wanted to adapt uh, a French toast that they have de had there, it was with ham and cheese. And when he came to Portugal, they increased the amount of cheese they used. So they changed a little bit and that's why the oh. name is little Frenchy. Okay. So this is, this is your the sandwich. Thing. <laughs> so I don't, uh, I don't, su don't uh, suggest this to vegan, vegan or vegetarians <laughs> because it contains a lot of meat. So it contains uh, parma ham, steak, uh, sausage, any type of meat you can think about. Yeah. Uh, and then it has, uh, on top, it has a melted cheese. Mm. And then one of the most special things about this is the sauce. So each restaurant uh, has their own recipe. In general, the ingredients are the same. It's, uh, it contains beer, tomato sauce, stock, uh, but then the, every restaurant has their special test, um, touch. Um, okay. And it's really, really good, but very caloric. And it's traditional from Porto, okay. the city of Porto in Portugal. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that sounds, it looks um, very tasty. So <laughs> <It's> <laughs> tough, I, have some, I want to eat. Uh, so, uh, so thank you very much for, for sharing your, your work, your research project and your favorite food in this case. And look forward to uh, listen to your presentation at our conference. Uh, thank you. At the beginning of next year. So thank you very much. Thank you.